Hey Dave, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good today. So let's focus today on query data for many API using secrets. So you have a lot of API and SDKs out there in the world. Some of them are public, some of them are private. You know, I, I tell you a lot of data can live in different shape and form. Um, you can have data sitting in data warehouse, you can have data on your local files, but most of the time when you want to do a lot of wrangling and merging data together, you're going to have to access an API. Um, you know, the Twitter API is becoming famous right now because Elon Musk is trying to make you pay 30 million per hour in order to query it. So we're going to query Twitter API today. And I didn't pay 30 million per hour. I don't know why I still have access, but apparently I still have access to it. So we are Notable, uh, which is a free Jupyter notebook solution here that you can connect by going to app.notable.io. In this notebook, you see query data from any API using secrets. We're going to um, use the dummy API that's available at randomuser.me slash API, which is a way for you to kind of train yourself at um, defining parameters in query. I'm going to import the library called request, which allows me to uh, use the, the function called get. And I'm going to specify the URL. By doing that, then I'm going to print the, re the, the call of that API. So the status code is 200. The text, that's the, the what the API returned to me. And the reason was, OK, so everything went well. I got the dummy API um, call. Now what I can do is actually uh, have a larger example uh, with this API example here living at the dogoapi.com. So you see this pretty kind of expanded out. A lot of response, yeah. Now, if ever, you know, uh, it's not very readable first, and it's a lot of data. So what you can do is being able to query that data. So in the URL parameter, you're going to define those uh, variable. So I'm going to use gender, because I know gender gender is a field in that uh, call that's being returned. And so I'm going to say gender equal female. So as you can see, when I print the, the text and the response, I can see gender female. I can change that to male. And I rerun the cell and say gender male. So that's the way you start building queries. Now, so all these queries okay. so far have been to public APIs, right? So you didn't need to authenticate with them or provide any account info. How do we go on yeah. to query private APIs that need that uh, authentication information? Yeah. So you can go a long way using public APIs, such as Berkeley University has a lot of data. The EPA has a lot of data about um, water quality and, and pollution as well, which I use a lot in those other notebooks. Um, data can come from um, this format as well as CSV and others. But like you just said, um, more advanced API calls will require a secret because you either use an API and SDK for those services that you are paying for, such as you know you want to create Git, uh, you want to create Twitter, you want to create your Facebook analytics, um, you want to get data that maybe you might not have access uh, apart from going directly into the tool, logging in and kind of seeing it on a dashboard. Um, so that's really what notebooks are for, is really bring all that data in one place so you can make sense of it the fastest way possible. So in order to access and pass those proxy, you're going to have to store your secret. They are usually called API key, client ID, user token, whatever it is, it's going to be a long string that doesn't really make sense. But in order to use it safely in Python code, usually you're going to outcode that secret within your Python code and then make it an environment viable. That environment variable is now in your kernel as a name, and you can use it with Python code. But it's not very secure because in Notable, it's a real-time collaboration tool. Like if we're in Google Doc, we can code together in real time. We can code async by leaving comment. Um, so if you open that notebook and I share my secrets, you're going to be able to maybe hack my account, stole my credit, stole, you know, impersonate me, basically. So what we do here is we have a feature called secret management. As you can see, I have a lot of secrets. You can create secrets, and they can be actually either um, generated at the space level or at the user level. So if you think about secrets at the user level, it's like a set of keys that you go around with you whenever you open a door, and you have that set of keys, and you can open the door, and you can go in there. So wherever you go in Notable, when you create a project, when you create a notebook, when you join someone on a notebook, if you start an, an hardware session, you're going to bring your secrets with you. So you're going to be able to query all the private API that you have access to. If you if you elevate that secrets um, at the space level, which is our notion of Teams or Google Drive, 
You're going to be able to share that secret with others. You're going to be the admin who is going to say, hey, I want to give access to all the people who are living in that data analytics space uh, because I'm the one who knows the secret to the Twitter API. So I'm going to say here, uh, Twitter key, um, that's the value. Now create that. And you, Dave, whenever you're going to work on this, on the notebook, on the project, um, within that uh, space, you're going to be able to access it. As you can see, it is not on the list here because I am not in that space, so it's normal uh, because that secret is assigned to the other space that I just created. And where is that secret so now, being stored now? Sorry? Where, where is that secret being stored that we put in there? It's not going into the notebook, right? No, no. So that secret is like safely stored using Ashicorp. Um, it's their, their product called Vault. Ashicorp is a public company. It's what most companies are using uh, to be SOC 2 type 2 and to be really secure. Cool. So now let's bring that secrets in my session so I can actually query what I want. So what we're going to do here is use that Twitter demo bearer token, which is my, my former bearer token for my Twitter account before it became uh, private and you have to pay for it. Apparently, it's still working. So the practical example here is um, to basically have um, my uh, token being added as an environment variable, like I said. So I'm going to import a bunch of uh, packages, import requests. We talked about it. I'm botting OS and, and JSON because I'm going to pass a JSON to make a data frame out of it. So here, my uh, secret that is not being shown to the other users who are opening that notebook is becoming an environment variable. That environment variable is called bear token. The API I'm going to fetch, we saw how to do it. You have to pass the URL. It's going to be the Twitter API. Uh, I'm going to use another method here to define the query parameters, but I could have used you know, the question mark like I did above. Um, it's a bit more complex here. Um, so I'm going to query all the tweets um, that have chat GPT as I mentioned, all the tweets that have been retweeted. And I want to retrieve another additional field, which is the, the author ID. Um, now what I do is uh, that's the way to authenticate that's, uh, to the Twitter API. That's the method that they tell you to use. Um, so I'm just going to uh, give my environment variable here so Twitter knows it is me. Uh, connecting to externally from within the table to my Twitter account. By creating this function, I'm going to be able to now uh, run that exact query. And what I'm doing now, as you can see, is actually just uh, loading that JSON and passing it in order to make a data frame out of it. Because what you want to do in the table, you have seen above, it's not very readable. Uh, just a bunch of text altogether is, is try to make a data frame out of it. So I'm going to run this cell. And boom, I get an extract. Twitter only gives me the first 10 tweets. Uh, so that's what I get. You see, I have count 10. Um, but yeah, that's the tweet um, that I could have seen by going to Twitter myself and searching for ChatGPT. That's the first random 10 tweets that was returned. Super. And what's great with Notable is we can actually build visualization automatically out of that uh, by the click of a button without running any code. So I took that um, data data frame now and just build a world cloud out of it. And that's the basically uh, tokenizing the text automatically, doing a bit of NLP without, without any code and showing you the, the most common um, words that were being used in all the tweets. Very cool. Yeah. You want to do like a test live? Let's see, well, what word do you want to Let's do a live test. So at? we are, what are you here? We're a week away from going to PyCon. We're excited about uh, Notable having a booth there. So why don't we search for PyCon and see what kind of tweets we have about people talking about the upcoming conference. Okay, let's do PyCon. I know, I know it's written like that. I don't think uppercase matters, but okay. Um, I just run that cell. Let's go fetch the data now. It's pretty fast. Yeah, PyCon. Look at that. So we have we got ten tweets, different IDs here. Uh, some mention. Some people were like afraid, scared. Uh, actually, not all in English, which is good. And different author ID. We have twice the same author ID because I get a story tweet here that took place. But yeah, so now what we can do is automatically send that through our save views and realization and see the world cloud update in real time, which is pretty neat. Look at that, real time. Um, I love the fact that we don't have only uh, English language here. We have a bit of everything. Yeah, it shows the global community showing up at PyCon. Yeah, and 2023. So yeah, that's basically how to create data from any API, public or private, uh, using secret in Notable. Perfect.